light the fire. Graham Nash is one of the great singer-songwriters of the rock era. He was a member of both Crosby, Stills & Nash and the Hollies, one of my favorites. He's also participated in some of rock's most iconic events. Don't let the past he performed at Woodstock and Altamont. I was there that day during the Summer of Love of 1967 in swinging London when the Beatles played a song for the world that still resonates to this day. In 67 I was living in, uh, in, in this news house in, in London, very pretty little place. And I'm lying in bed and, and uh, about 9.30 on a Sunday morning the phone rings and it was uh, McCartney and Paul said, uh, we're doing this thing over at EMI, would you like to come and be a part of it? We've invited a bunch of our friends, we're going to have an orchestra there and some balloons and it should be a fun time, do you want to come? So I said, absolutely Paul, I'll be there. And we went down to EMI to the big room there and uh, witnessed um, All You Need Is Love being uh, televised. I think it was the very first uh, satellite broadcast that had ever taken place. So it was kind of an important, uh, important event and any excuse for a party in the 60s was taken at the drop of a hat. Sure, you want a party? Let's go. It was a very interesting afternoon and early evening. The orchestra was indeed there and uh, it went flawlessly. I can hear myself whistling at the end and, you know, I, I just have a great warm uh, feeling about that day. You know, we were safe, we were in a recording studio. I looked around, you know, everyone from, from Marianne and, and Mick to, you know, lots of people were there. We knew it was a special afternoon. We knew that something magical was going to go on. It's so tremendous, and everybody sang at the end. I mean, you get a feeling when you're watching it. It seems like the pinnacle of the 60s to me, the greatest it, feeling was happening. It was a party, uh, it was a thrill for me. I was a big fan, I still am a big fan. I go back with John a long, long time, way before the Hollies, as a matter of fact. I mean, I saw them, you know, live in 1959 as Johnny and the Moon Dogs. And I remember when they were coming down to London to record their first album. Um, but to see them knowing that probably a billion people were also watching them at that moment was an incredibly inclusive feeling. And I was so glad to be there. It was very nice of Paul to invite me. <laughs> 